Hello and welcome to another edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts. Right off the bat on the old show today, the Volkswagen Electric E. No, Golf E. Fuck. Golf I'm trying to go fast, so I'm really fucking this up just because I'm trying to go fast. You know what? Screw it. Let's just keep it rolling. Three, two, one. Hello and welcome to another edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts. Right off the bat on the old show today, Volkswagen Golf E. The E Golf is actually going on sale in the U.S. market very, very soon, and Volkswagen has released official pricing on this particular machine. It will come in at thirty-five thousand four hundred and forty-five U.S. dollars, which does put it the most expensive EV inside of its little segment of automobiles. That's more expensive than the Focus. EV from Ford, also the Chevrolet Volt, and not to mention the Nissan Leaf. But in the U.S. market, the Volkswagen Group was kind of looked on as somewhat of a higher-end brand, so this may work out right into Volkswagen's favor. It's going to be very interesting to see how well it sells against its counterparts. Maserati, there's apparently some rumors floating about that the Alferi concept is going to be coming into production. We've talked about that in the past, but the folks over at Auto Express apparently have got some inside information about this particular machine. Number one, that this vehicle is going to be called the 6C, which to me, I think it really should be called the Alferi. It was much better named than the 6C, but that being said, nonetheless, this vehicle coming into production is going to be better and not having one at all. Now, it's going to be built on a shortened Quattroporte platform and have Ferrari Source 3-liter twin-turbocharged V6, much like it's once run in some of the other Maserati platforms, not to mention in the brand new California T Turbo Ferrari California. So it'll be very interesting, and apparently sometime during auto show season this winter, we're going to see an official production version, apparently, from the folks over at Maserati. Next up on the list, Infiniti's getting very, very close to releasing this brand new Q50 En Rouge, which much talked about on this particular program, mainly because this is basically a four-door GTR. It has the 3.8 liter twin turbocharged V6 out of the GTR with the transmission with the all-wheel drive platform. It is a pretty serious piece of kit. And we've seen it in tons of stuff, especially just recently was actually run at the Spa Frankershaw circuit, the actual circuit where this vehicle gets its namesake. And it was actually run between a an American male, also a Japanese lady, and the Sebastian Vettel, who is four-time world champion in the Infinity Red Bull Grand Prix team. Now, this particular vehicle is going to have to jump through some hoops, especially because of the En Rouge name, which has to be trademarked here in the U.S. for a name of an automobile. Now, they're going to have to put a little kickback to the spa Frankershaw circuit for this particular namesake. And this is not something that we've... Well, it's not something that's unprecedented, because it's been had before... Especially from the folks over at Pontiac, you think back in the day of the Trans Am series from the SCCA and the Trans Am automobile that came from Pontiac later, yes, Pontiac had to kick back or General Motors had to give a little money back for every Trans Am that was sold to the SCCA. So this is not unheard of, but it really would be interesting to hear just what Spa Frankshaw may get for the namesake of this vehicle, especially because they're not going to build a whole bunch of these things, so... We'll hopefully find out something soon. Next up on the list, an interesting little situation that's going on here in the U.S. Hatchbacks that are never sold well apparently now are selling really well. Especially the high-end version ones, the ST versions of the Focus and this being the Fiesta. These vehicles are selling very, very well here in the U.S. market. The Fiesta ST, well, maybe we don't get this three-door version like they get in Europe. But the four-door version has been selling out in just 30 days of it actually hitting the floor. Only 30 days supply for Ford to keep an ST Fiesta on the lot. Now when it goes to its bigger brother, the Focus ST, this vehicle is only sitting on the lot for 15 days. Only 15 days of supply for this particular machine. So Ford is going to ramp up production to try to keep up with demand. Yes, they're going to make them just as fast as they can sell them. Which is a pretty good deal indeed. Now, sticking with the Focus and its real high-end version, the RS, 
that has been seen pounding around the Norschleifloop Nürburgring circuit in Germany. More rumors coming out that we early reported that it was going to have somewhere around 330 horsepower. Hearing more rumors that it may have a lot closer to 350 brake horsepower. Not to mention torque vectoring. The, the actual action where it actually speeds up the outside wheel going through corners to actually make the handling that much better, which is very intriguing. First time I've ever heard of it actually going on in a front-wheel drive automobile, even though it may have happened before other than that. But very interesting situation. Can't wait to hear more about the RS, especially then underneath this one Ford umbrella. Apparently there's nothing holding back that RS coming to U.S. shores. And that's all there was that I thought was worth talking about for this edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts. If you want to jump on over to the Facebook page, the link's down in the show notes. And also, if you want to subscribe to the channel, you can do so at any time and get the first dibs on the brand new shows as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again real soon.